<laughs> all right, all right, all right. Like that. Okay, so it is time for Sass and Sage, also brought to you by Elegance by Design, where healthy hair and skin is our priority and beautiful you is our specialty. All right, tonight we are going to follow up our original conversation where we are talking about parenting. Um, tonight's Sass and Sage is titled Building Character versus Boarding Tenants. Are we holding ourselves accountable as parents? <clears throat> All right. So we're going to chat about something tonight that is a touchy subject for many of us. And I apologize in advance if it ruffles your parental feathers a bit. A little bit. Um, a touchy for reasons we don't always like to discuss due to less than desirable personal experiences, success stories, despite adversity and struggle, tradition, and a variety of other things that mold our thinking where child rearing and releasing are concerned. I'm going to attempt to stretch your understanding into a space you may not have been afforded, but one that as parents or lovers of youth in any capacity, owe it to those we love to at least entertain it for a few moments. As a young girl, my mother has always told my brother and I that it was her job to do more than allow children to just grow up in her house. It was her job to raise us, to be productive human beings to the world. She took this job very seriously <laughs> and did a kick-ass job with my brother and I and countless foster and daycare children here in the city. It didn't take long for us to easily identify which of our friends sometimes family, and general strangers were being raised versus allowed to grow up. <laughs> and we quickly came to appreciate the lessons where we, <clears throat> we quickly learned to appreciate the lessons we were being given. This was our life, being raised in a red state with a very blue, very liberal, and truthful Oakland, California, born and bred baby, <laughs> mother. I can speak for both of us, for all of us, we were blessed abundantly. But as we all know, times change and generations require adjustments to achieve the next level of humanity, evolution, simply progression in general. And we have to own our role in the current scheme of things and truly ask ourselves if in 2019, are we preparing our children to become productive, critically thinking, compassionate, fiscally responsible, contributing individuals to society while within our walls covered by the wisdom we've earned as elders? Or are we just ready to be free and live life? They can figure it out like I or we did after all. Look at us. We're good, right? I'm sorry, sugars. As a whole, as a community, we are not good. Not at being happy and whole and truly prepared for what this current world is throwing at us. And it shows. I try my hardest to live a life of accountability and education. And as hard as that can be at times, I realize the reward in that after the tough stuff has passed. I need us to really take a moment and be accountable to our children. We have to be willing to educate ourselves and prepare our legacy from the foundation so our families can all buy into the goal, thriving, not just survival. There are many of us who were told at the age of 18 and the moment we come down the steps from walking that graduation stage that our bags will be packed because it's time to go, you're grown. Or here's your bill. Pay it or pack up, your choice. Maybe at the age of 13 or so, your parents began the countdown of how many years were left until you left the house and they would be free again. Now, even today, as I type these words, I can totally understand why some parents feel this way. Trust me, I have three kids myself. The countdown is a thing. But I encourage you to look at it from the perspective of the legacy we are attempting to build within our families and within our communities. And mull over the other ways that, that other cultures release their children into the world and how likely they are for success as a result of that additional time spent. Black people have been workers here in this country since forever. It's what we do, contrary to the stereotypes, and it's what we teach our children to do. So our children watch us work and make magic out of dust, often never sharing or showing them how that magic happens. It's not pretty or fun and rarely has a catchy Disney tune accompanying the lesson. Adulting is hard and they have forever to do it. <laughs> oh, but they don't though. Childhood goes quick. We all know that. The memes longing for those days are evidence of that. So within age appropriateness, I believe we owe it to our children to share how we navigate life and its challenges so that when it does happen, they don't fall apart. Or like many of us, 
myself included, end up back home. Many of us were grown at 18 or so and thought we had it all together and were taught to roll with it, deal with it, man or woman up, hustle through, and all the other motivational cover my need for help phrases we tell each other to, in my opinion, keep from sharing our own struggles at times and unfortunately our failures. We're all walking highlight reels. For some reasons, we have no issue imparting the traumas many of us experience by simply being out here too soon onto the people we, the very people we vowed to protect with our lives, our children. We have no problems doing that. Yes, you turned out fine. Not taking anything away from you or your testimony, but our babies are here to be better than us. That is our job as parents. As torchbearers, it's what we decide for our lives when we decide to give life. So I implore us to think about the lessons we share, the struggles we hide, and the legacies we plan to leave our children. Will it be one of planning and thoughtfulness, execution and wholeness, maintaining integrity and responsibility to something other than stress and juggling the weight of just making it? Can we stand to open up a bit more so that if, if we do put them out there at an early adulthood to figure it out, that they have more than the fear of not being able to come back here if they hit a snag? Can we think about transitioning our relationships into a safe place for them as they move, up, move about life and allow those challenges to be brainstormed at the table the same way you, told, you toiled over science fair projects way back when? When will we encourage them to try or toe the line? We have the whole, we have to hold true to the promise we made when we told them, I got you, baby, always, no matter what, and do just that without shame and harping on shortcomings. Comparisons to how you had it all together. Offer up the wisdom you've gained and encourage them to do the same by sticking with it and knowing you're there through the journey. If you had that, wasn't it a blessing? If you missed that, wouldn't it be amazing to be the change, to break a chain? It won't happen overnight. No change worth ever having is. But I think the proof of concept is evident. The need for a shift is glaring. And I think it's worth the conversation to see about these babies. They, after all, are our future. This has been Sass and Sage. I appreciate you chilling with me tonight. If you have any questions or concerns, holla at me. I hope you enjoy it. Y'all have a great week.